In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use the calibration tools in Lightroom. Here's a quick before and after to see what you can do with just this tool. I think the best thing to do first is to understand what is actually going on. So calibration is actually changing how Lightroom processes colors. Different camera manufacturers actually read and process colors differently. So that's why you might say that Fuji film has great skin tones and Canon as well. And maybe Sony has great bold contrasty colors or the sky is really pop in XYZ type of camera. And it really is how colors shot on different cameras are processed and viewed. So with the calibration tool, we can actually go in and change how the reds, greens, and blues are processed both via the hue and saturation sliders. And this is going to be different than what we see in the general saturation and hue adjustments or the HSL panel, and I'll show you in just a second. If I take the hue of the reds, for example, let me change this. Notice what happens to this color wheel. All the colors change. And you might be wondering, well, Phil, why are all the colors changing? I thought we were just talking about red. Well, all colors are made up of reds, greens, and blues. And when we are changing the hue of the red part of red, for example, well, that's gonna change. But there's red in this yellow. And if we change how red is processed, that yellow is also going to change similar to the greens or the blues and same with the saturation desaturate make it more saturated this is different than hsl where if we want to change just the hue of red what happens is it just changes the hue of what's actually seen in the photo not the underlying color balance or mixture of every single pixel, but just what you see in your photo that's red, it's changing the hue of. Same with the saturation here. If we wanna drop down the blue saturation, it's just dropping what Lightroom sees in the photo as blue. I hope that makes sense. I know it is a little bit confusing. Now let's look at this photo, for example, to show you again. Say we wanna get rid of red, well, you would go to the saturation and drop the red slider here in the HSL panel or take the eyedropper, select that, and it's going to get rid of, rid of the red and orange saturation there. That's different than the calibration. If we get rid of the saturation of the red primary, it's decreasing the red color that's within all colors, or it's changing the hue of red in all the colors and it's a more balanced natural process to make minute adjustments to colors so hopefully now you understand how it's working basically calibration applies to the whole picture because it's changing every single pixel and hsl is just looking at the individual colors that are represented visually that you're seeing why would we use this so the first is to make some minor adjustments to things like skin tone or white balance. So here I have a picture of myself. And one thing I find that with my Fuji camera, I often find that the reds in my skin are a little bit too red. So I can come in here and drop the red saturation of red primary and get a more natural looking skin tone that I think I have in the natural state. Now, that's good for my skin. It's a little bit undersaturated, and maybe I want my blues to pop a little bit more. So I can go in here and boost the saturation of my blues. And here, if we turn the before and after, it's a very subtle adjustment. I can push it just a little bit so you can see more what's happening. But my skin isn't as splotchy as before. Now, if I did that with HSL, let's take this again, and I drop the red, notice, especially my lips, what happens when I drop the red? It starts to look, and if I push it far, I start to look more like a walking dead zombie. 
And that's just because it's looking for red in the image. So it might find some here and here and here on the shirt and it's removing or reducing the saturation there. Whereas with calibration, my entire face has some red in it and it's decreasing the saturation of the that red in every single pixel. Hopefully that makes sense. So, so for skin tones, this is great. Now, on a different example, here's a photo. This was from unsplash.com, David Arakri. So for this example, it has this sort of like muted green tone to it. So the skin tone doesn't look too natural to me. I will actually add some red here, add red saturation, and maybe make some minor adjustments to not the red primary hue, but maybe to the green primary hue boost that just a little, little bit more towards blue compared to yellow. And even adding a little a bit of saturation to the blue helps in my opinion. So you can see the before and the after, before and after there. Okay. So skin tones is a great use for this. Now there's another reason you might use this and that's more for style. So here we have this photo of a sunset. This is also from Unsplash, Tim Bogdanov. Here we can use the red primary. It's great for sunsets and boosting the warmth in a sunset. So we can increase the saturation there, here. And then if we want to change the hue of all the reds, we can make it a little bit more yellowy pushing it this way, or a little bit more red. I'm just gonna push it a little bit more yellowy there. And then I'm also going to increase the saturation of the blue. Play a little bit around with the hue as well. So here we can see the before and after. And so when developing a style of yours in your photos, you might want your blues to be super rich and saturated and so coming here to the calibration panel initially when you're editing photos and boosting the saturation of blue primary might be the way to do that. I'll show you one more. So here is another landscape photo I shot. Here's the after as you saw here's the before and you can see what I've done. I've boosted the saturation of the red primary. I also made it more orange compared to the sort of magenta that was it naturally had. And then with the blue primary, I also boosted the saturation, but then I dropped the hue to more of a cyan. And that's because I wanted that more gold blue look compared to what this is a little bit more of a muted magenta and uh, grayish blue look and when I do that it not only changes the colors of the blues and the water and the sky but also because we're adjusting the entire photo it adjusts the yellow in these trees the green in these trees and the entire image and the colors are processed differently now you might get a similar thing if you just go into our saturation adjustments and we adjust the saturation, maybe we try to warm it up. Oh, not really. It's not as simple as just changing the white balance or the tint here in our basic settings. Now we might be able to do something a little bit better with HSL where we are, let's go ahead and pinpoint the saturation of our sky, the blue, and then maybe we play around with the hue of the purple in these mountains. It's, you can see that f for that sort of quick adjustment, it's not really working as well as the calibration panel. And this is just focused on these specific areas and it can start to look a little bit splotchy when you push it too far. And the HSL panel, as we've learned in my other tutorials and the course, it's a great panel to use for different things. But in terms of basic color science and how colors are processed in your photos, it's a great panel to start with to one, fix some minor changes to things like skin tone, 
but also, as we've seen, to come up with more of a style in your photography. And that's up to you to decide what your style is going to look like. Maybe you want your reds, you don't like yellows, you want your reds to be a little bit more pink or magenta. All that is up to you to decide and come up with a style necessarily. But hopefully now you know how to use the calibration tool, how it works, and potentially how it can make you a better photo editor. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in another tutorial. Have a beautiful day.